These investors are welcome, but they've got to add to this country and work with us. Uh, the Honourable Judith Collins. Oh, thank you, Mr Chair, for this opportunity. I must say that was an interesting speech from the Honourable David O'Connor. He told us, he told Parliament that this government is pro-foreign investment. I thought they're as pro-foreign investment as they are pro the West Coast. Yes, exactly. Not really at all, actually. Certainly not that protest I was at the other day. Gosh, it was fun getting back protesting. <laughs> Haven't been able to do it for a while. Fantastic. Now I've got something to protest about. And it's this useless government. And, um, and I tell you what, the West Coast people were busy. I didn't see Greg O'Connor there. Didn't see Greg O'Connor. He wasn't there. He wasn't there. No, they're all wondering what happened to him. They used to think he was one of theirs, but they don't now. I thought it was very interesting listening. This, is, this part of the bill is all about enforcement and other miscellaneous matters. So let's have a look at this enforcement, shall we? We're going to have bureaucrats enforcing it and checking things are happening. Well, are they going to have a little How uniform? Dare they? Are they going to have a little uniform? How dare they? What are they going to be their little powers? Good. You're going to put them, give them, is the government going to give them the powers of the Search and Surveillance Act? Mm, no. No. Oh, he's looking, the minister in the chair is looking a little bit worried now. This is, by the way, the same government that wants to get rid of the serious fraud office. That's yeah, right. Yeah, so they're, they're the people in charge of corruption investigations, and what they're doing is they're going to get rid of that, and at the same time, by the way, they're going to have all these bureaucrats running around checking what's happening, checking without any powers of search and surveillance. Oh, dear. So I suppose I'll just have to ask for some paper because that will definitely tell the truth. Um, I think that we've got a government that doesn't quite understand that if you're going to have enforcement and lots of rules around things, or you say you're going to have enforcement, you have to give your bureaucrats the powers to do so. And so I just think this is a most interesting part of the bill. And we're going to have all sorts of opportunities here for things to be uh, done outside of this bill and within the exemptions as well. When we look at this, they're going to say here is that we, the person who requires an interest, this is section 50, or clause 51A, person who acquires an interest in residential land must make and provide a statement. Oh, that's going to be good. That's going to be tough. One pager. A one pager, a statement. Well, I guess the thing is, the trouble is, is that if you're dealing with people who are telling the truth, that won't be a problem. But what if they're not? Who's going to check? Are we going to have people checking? Are they really living in a relationship with a New Zealand? Are they really permanent residents? Or are they actually having us all on? I'm also fascinated about why we have the exemption for forestry. And I say this because the Honourable Dame McConnor talks so much about it. Do you know, some of you will remember that there is a place called Kyangalroa Forest. And as a child, so just a mere 10 years or so ago, a few decades maybe, I was taken on a bus trip. Not to be lost, thankfully, like little, little, like little Gretel, but instead, I always did, I always caused trouble. <laughs> Back seats made more fun on the bus. And sometimes in Parliament too, I found. Um, anyway. <laughs> Went down to see Kyangarora Forest, and it looked like this was this fantastic forest, except it wasn't, because it was built, it was, it was planted during the Great Depression. And once employment came on, once the Second World War came on, there weren't people there to prune it. So we ended up this massive forest that was only ever good for pulp and paper, for newsprint. And that's the problem. You can't just plant trees and think it's all going to happen. They have to be... Uh, pruned, they have to be looked after, and one of the things with this is it doesn't actually do, it doesn't actually require any of that. We've got 70% of our forests currently owned by foreign interests, and this government that's so against foreign investment is happy for the rest of them to go to foreign investment and get ETS uh, credits. There's something very strange going on here, and I think it's something that this parliament should be asking more about. Why 
forestry, why not sorghum? Why not blueberries? Why forestry? And when I look at the exemptions and the rules, it's very hard for this to be operational. Mr. Mr. Um, I call Andrew Bailey. Oh, thank you very much. Mr. Um, Chair, I've just got to say...